Gap Insurance. At least four states are taking dealers to task over the sale of it. They include California, Texas, Colorado, and Minnesota. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Liz, there are two issues that these states are trying to address, and they're essentially the same two issues that we've had with dealer gap policies for years. Yeah. First, there's a problem with how much gap insurance is being sold for at dealers, and secondly, the fact that a percentage of buyers who are sold gap definitely didn't need it. Yes, as Kevin said, when we've talked about dealer sold gap insurance over the years, our complaints about it have been quite similar to these state legislators. It's really encouraging to see state lawmakers responding to the same issue we've already been talking about. In the report we are sharing today, there's evidence of both problems, gap policy prices being too high and being pushed on people not needing it. Beyond this argument, we've always recommended that if people put enough cash down, as in a given percentage of the sale price, like 20 to 30 percent, they won't need gap coverage at all. Yeah. And in addition, buyers should always plan to pay the tax title and license fees out of pocket. With regard to legislative action on gap, California is leading the way. California Assembly Bill 2311, that's already law, bans sales of the gap product on car loans with a balance less than 70% of a vehicle's value, something they shouldn't have had to address. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. And it caps the price of the gap policy at 4% of the amount the borrower finances. So in other words, a gap policy on a $20,000 loan could not be sold for more than $800. But it also means a gap policy on a $40,000 loan could be as much as $1,600. Ouch. The percentage should be more like 2%. You'll see why I say that in a moment. What we've been saying for years is that dealers are infamous for pushing gap policy insurance on car buyers like it's candy. And they don't <laughs> stop just because somebody has enough cash in their deal and clearly does not need it. Yeah. This year, California auto dealerships have had to quickly react to get in compliance with the new state crackdown by cutting the price of the coverage and selling it less frequently on vehicles with smaller loans, as data shows. The Assembly Bill 2311 we're talking about became law in September and took effect January 1st this year. Every state needs to follow suit. The average new vehicle loan financed was 41445 during the fourth quarter of 2022, and it's difficult to imagine that some people paid as much as 10% of that price for a gap policy. That's crazy. That puts the peak at $4,100. The average used vehicle loan was $27,768, putting those gap policies with a peak at $2,700. Total insanity, actually. With the passage of the law in September, you'd think dealers would have started complying right away, but as you'll see in a moment, no, they didn't. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, under this new law, deals with loan-to-vehicle value ratios above the limit noted in the gap policy would still be permitted if buyers are notified in writing acknowledged by the buyer, the bill states. So essentially, the car buyer would have to be told something like this. You don't need this policy, but if you sign here saying we notified you, we'll sell it to you anyway. <laughs> it's ridiculous that legislators would even write such language into the bill. Finance officers get signatures like that easily by sliding several documents toward the buyer at once saying, just sign here, here, and here, and we'll get you out of here. The buyer thinks that they are helping to speed things up. They trust the officer and they just sign everything. This chart appearing on the screen illustrates how gap insurance priced above 4% of the purchase price has plummeted in California since passage of this law. Yeah. The percentage of gap contracts not meeting the specified terms has fallen off dramatically. If you take a closer look at this chart, it shows that in February of 2022, 24% of car deals included a gap policy that exceeded 4% of the financed amount. You can see that despite the passage of the law in September, the problem climbed sharply through 2022, so that by December, 46% of all car deals had a gap policy price well above 4% of the amount financed. And that doesn't make any sense. Instead of complying, dealers scrambled to rip people off as much as possible all the way up to the deadline. While all of this was happening with gap pricing in February 2022, it shows that on car deals with loan balances less than 70% of the vehicle price, clearly the ones who don't need gap, Yet 4.5% of buyers were sold gap anyway. By October of last year, it was just 1.7% and dropped down to 0.07% by March of this year. Well, it should even be zero. So okay. compared to California, full gap compliance is a bit elusive in Colorado, Minnesota, and Texas. Sure. Texas bans gap policies, which would cost consumers more than 5% of the amount financed. And Colorado won't let dealers price gap above $300 or 2% of the amount finance, whichever is greater. That's the one I approve of. I think it's a wonderful formula for buyers to use and we'll recap it later. 
$300 or no more than 2% of the purchase price. Minnesota bans the sale of GAP on used vehicles worth $5,000 or less. These laws have existed for a while, but an analysis of more than 1,000 loans with GAP from Colorado, more than 1,000 loans from Minnesota, and more than 8,000 written in Texas still found GAP deals out of compliance. For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, GAP coverage pays any loan balance not reimbursed by traditional auto insurers who are only obligated to cover the vehicle's actual value in the event of a total loss. It's called guaranteed asset protection because it protects you in the event of a total loss of your vehicle. Sure. Like other F&I products, GAP is often bundled and financed within auto loans rather than purchased separately. There's another great aspect of California's bill AB 2311. It also requires buyers to sign off on a separate form notifying customers that F&I coverage and other add-on products are always optional. It gives consumers the right to cancel the coverage at any time without a fee, and the bill compels lenders to refund charges quickly when consumers cancel the protection or pay off their auto loans. That's something that every California car buyer in our audience should know. Remember Assembly Bill 2311. Now, we said we'd come back to the point about why GAP shouldn't be more than 2% of the purchase price. If any one state can do this, every state can do this. Absolutely. Remember Colorado's law about GAP? $300 or no more than 2% of the purchase price, whichever is greater. That's awesome. And a guide we recommend that each of you follow. And yes, GAP is always negotiable even at a dealer. Here's how it works in Colorado. Kevin, take it away. For a vehicle of $15,000 or less, GAP would cost $300 if you actually needed it. For a vehicle at 20,000, 2% comes out to $400 gap policy, still very reasonable. A $40,000 vehicle would have a gap policy sold at a cap of $800. I could live with that. And so can any dealer in any other state. That's the, right. The good news is that soon enough with our new hassle-free car buying process, you won't have to deal with high pressure coming from the finance office. If you need a gap policy and you want to buy it from the dealer, you'll be able to negotiate it to the price you want. As we suggested, you shouldn't pay more than 2% of the purchase price. You'll be able to avoid dealer hassles because, as we've been saying in recent shows, we are in the beginning phases of launching some tests with the hassle-free car buying process that we've been talking about. Toyota is the most likely first brand and the most likely state to start in is Florida. On the other side of the country, California is also an early adopter state, likely to go live too. And we're very excited to be sharing this news with you today, friends. If you jumped on our notification list looking for a Toyota in Florida, don't be surprised when I call you and say, hello, my friend, this is the homework guy. We are now ready to help you buy a new car. By the way, if you're new here to the Homer Guy channel, the hassle-free car buying process we've mentioned, it's definitely not too late to get on the list. Find the link in that description box down below or visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com, to find it. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. And give this video a like if you appreciate what we do here for you. Right here, courtesy of the Homework Guy team in our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips, best research topics, and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. And we really appreciate the trust and confidence that thousands of you have shown us by getting on the notification list for our new hassle-free car buyers process. It's going to be a glorious finish to go out of 2023 with this new car buying process in place. Find a link for the sign-up sheet just below the video and also on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. By the way, if you're new here, we invite you to join our huge YouTube family. If you've just recently joined us as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.